Introduction Hey kids, we have learned so many things about plant. Now we are going to learn mineral nutrients for growth and development and perform other essential activities for plant. A plant takes most of the nutrient required for metabolic and other activities from the soil. Soil provides the place for roots to fix and grow. It holds water in which the soil nutrients are changed into ions, which is the form that plant can use. For example, potassium helps in opening and closing of stomata. With the availability of all essential nutrients, a plant can survive very well. So, throughout this module, we will learn essential nutrients for plants. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Know Mineral Requirements of Plants Discuss Essential Mineral Elements Describe Role of Macro and Micronutrient Explain Deficiency Symptoms and Essential Elements Discuss Toxicity of Micronutrient Explain Mechanism of Absorption of Elements Give Idea of translocation of solute. Explain metabolism of nitrogen. Methods to study the mineral requirements of plants. As the population of the world is growing constantly, so we need more reliable ways to meet the demand of food. One such technique is hydroponics. Hydroponics is a technique of growing plants without soil in water containing dissolved nutrients advantages of hydroponics plants can be grown anywhere controlled plant growth and water and nutrients are conserved essential mineral elements the essential elements are nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium sulfur boron chlorine iron manganese Zinc, copper, molybdenum, and nickel. Criteria for essentiality An element is considered to be essential if the plant is not able to complete its life cycle in the absence of element. The element is not replaceable by any other element. The element is directly involved in metabolism of plant. Criteria for Essentiality The elements can be divided into two broad categories. They are Macronutrient Micronutrient Macronutrient The nutrient which are present in the tissues of the plant in high amount. Some of the macronutrient are Nitrogen Phosphorus and Potassium Nitrogen is a major component of protein, chlorophyll and other enzymes that are essential for plant life. Phosphorus is necessary for seed germination, protein formation and almost all phases of growth and metabolism in plants. Potassium is necessary for formation of sugars, carbohydrates, protein synthesis and division of cell in roots and other parts of the plant. Micronutrient Micronutrients are the elements essential for plant growth which are needed in only very small amount. These elements are also called trace elements. The micronutrients are boron, copper, iron, chlorine, manganese, molybdenum and zinc. Essential elements Essential elements can be divided into four broad categories. Essential elements can be considered as component of biomolecule such as carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and nitrogen. Essential elements can be considered as energy related chemical compounds in plants for example magnesium in chlorophyll. Essential elements that act on enzymes either activate them or inhibit them. For example ZN2 plus is an activator of alcohol dehydrogenase. Some essential elements change the osmotic potential of a cell. For example, 
Potassium plays a significant role in opening and closing of stomata. Role of macro and micronutrients Nitrogen This element is required in the highest amount and it is absorbed as ammonium ion, nitrate ion and nitrite ion. It is required for meristematic tissues and the metabolic active cells. It also helps in formation of protein, hormones and nucleic acids etc. Phosphorus it is absorbed in the form of phosphate ions by plants. It is part of cell membrane, some proteins, nucleic acids and nucleotides and required for all phosphorylation reactions. Potassium It is absorbed in the form of potassium ions. It plays important role in opening and closing of stomata and cell division. Calcium it is absorbed by the plants in the form of calcium ions. It enhances water movement in cells and is necessary for cell growth and division. Calcium is immovable. Once deposited on plant tissue, there is a constant supply for growth. Magnesium It is a structural component of chlorophyll molecule and is required for functioning of enzymes in plant to produce carbohydrates, sugars and fats. It is essential for the germination of seeds and used to formation of fruits and nut. Sulfur It is a structural component of amino acids, vitamins and enzymes. It gives flavors to many vegetables. Iron It is absorbed by the plants in the form of ferric ions. It is necessary for many enzymes function and act as catalyst for the synthesis of chlorophyll. Manganese It plays crucial role in enzyme activity for photosynthesis, respiration and nitrogen metabolism. Zinc It is essential to carbohydrate metabolisms, internodal elongation and protein synthesis. Copper it is present in roots and play role in nitrogen metabolism. It is a component of enzymes that use carbohydrates and proteins. Boron It is necessary for formation of cell wall, membrane integrity. It plays a role in flowering, fruiting, cell division and the movement of hormones. Molybdenum it reduces nitrates to ammonia. Without molybdenum, protein synthesis is blocked and plant growth ceases. Chlorine It involves in osmosis, that is, movement of water or solute in cells. Deficiency Symptoms of Essential Elements When plants lack the required quantities of one or more essential elements, then Plant shows poor growth and develop specific deficiency symptom. The morphological changes in plants due to deficiency of elements are called deficiency symptoms. Important deficiency symptoms are Chlorosis Abnormal condition of green plants in which the stems and leaves turn pale, green or yellow. The yellowing is due to a reduction in the levels of the green chlorophyll pigments. It may be caused by a number of factors. Deficiency of magnesium, iron or manganese is a common cause. Deficiency Symptoms Necrosis It is the localized death of tissue of leaves. The death of tissues may spread to entire leaf. The deficiency of calcium results in necrosis of young meristematic regions such as root tips, or young leaves. Stunting The growth is retarded. The stems appear condensed and short. The deficiency of calcium results in stunted growth. Dieback of shoot Death of stems or branches of woody or herbaceous plants starting from the apex and proceeding downwards slowly or quickly due to copper deficiency. Toxicity of micronutrient A fair increase or decrease in the amount of micronutrient required by the plant cause toxicity. 
the symptoms of toxicity are difficult to identify. The toxicity levels of one element differ with different plant species. If one element is in excess, then it may inhibit the uptake of another element. For example, excess of manganese may cause deficiency of iron, magnesium and calcium. Mechanism of Absorption of Elements The movement of ions is called flux. The inward movement of ions into the cells is called influx and the outward movement is called efflux. The uptake of mineral ions follow two phases. First phase, plant tissues kept in mineral solution. Mineral ions move into the outer cells rapidly, the apoplast. Second phase, mineral ions move slowly into the inner space, the symplast. It is an active process and metabolic energy is utilized. Translocation of solutes Translocation is the movement of mineral salts from one region to another. Through xylem, mineral salts are translocated from one part of the plant to another. Soil as reservoir of essential elements the elements present in soil in several chemical forms. Elements can be dissolved in soil solution as ions. They may be bound in insoluble forms. As elements change their form in soil, so a dynamic equilibrium exists that shifts according to the soil conditions including concentration of different ions, pH and aeration of the soil. Soil also contains nitrogen fixing bacteria other useful microorganisms. It also holds water. Metabolism of Nitrogen Nitrogen Cycle All life on Earth requires nitrogen compounds, for example, proteins and nucleic acids. Nitrogen cycle involves the following steps. Nitrogen fixation, ammonification, nitrification, denitrification, Nitrogen fixation The process of conversion of nitrogen into ammonia or other nitrogen compounds is known as nitrogen fixation. Lightning and ultraviolet radiation provide energy to convert nitrogen into nitrogen oxides like N2O, NO and NO2. Nitrogen cycle Ammonification the process by which organic nitrogenous compounds are decomposed to produce ammonia is known as ammonification. Nitrification Nitrification is the process of converting ammonia first into nitrite and then into nitrate. 2NH3 plus 3O2 gives 2NO2 plus 2H plus plus 2H2O. 2NO2 plus O2 gives 2NO3. This process is carried out by soil bacteria that are chemoautotrophs. Ammonia is oxidized into nitrite by nitrosomonas and nitrococcus. Nitrite is oxidized to nitrate by nitrobacter. The nitrates are absorbed by the plants and reduced to nitrites. Denitrification it is the process of conversion of reduction of the nitrates into free nitrogen. It is carried out by the bacteria like Pseudomonas and Theobacillus. Biological Nitrogen Fixation Biological nitrogen fixation is the process in which atmospheric nitrogen is reduced to ammonia by living organisms in the presence of nitrogenase. The nitrogen-fixing bacteria may be free-living or symbiont. Free-living nitrogen fixers are Azotobacter, Bejerinkia, both are aerobics, whereas Rhodospirulum is anaerobic. Cyanobacteria such as Anabena and Nostoc are also free-living nitrogen fixers. Symbiotic Biological Nitrogen Fixation the classical example of symbiotic association is legume-bacteria relationship. 
Leguminous plants have root nodules in which the symbiotic bacteria rhizobium fix atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. The ammonia is subsequently available for many important biological molecules such as amino acids, proteins, vitamins and nucleic acids. Frankia is free living bacteria in soil which can also fix atmospheric nitrogen. Nodule formation When the root hair of a leguminous plant comes in contact with rhizobium, it becomes curled or deformed due to the chemicals secreted by the bacterium. The rhizobia enters into deformed root hair and proliferates within the root hair. The plant responds by forming an infection thread that grows inwards to deliver the bacteria to the tissues. The nodule establishes contact with the vascular tissues of the host for absorption of nutrients. The formation of root nodules and nitrogen fixation occurs under the control of genes of legumes and genes of bacteria. The reaction occurs is nitrogen plus 8 electron 8 hydrogen ions plus 16 ATP gives 2 NH3 plus hydrogen plus 16 ADP plus 16 PI. Fate of ammonia The ammonia formed by nitrogen fixation is used for the synthesis of amino acids. There are two processes by which amino acids are synthesized. Reductive amination Ammonia reacts with alpha-ketogluretic acid and forms glutamic acid. Transmination In this process, the amino group is transferred from one amino acid to the keto group of a keto acid. Did you know? Plant roots are surrounded by thousands of bacteria and fungi living in the soil and on the root surface. Plants use their defense system to identify beneficial microorganisms. For example, when the plant detects a chitin molecule that is secreted by rhizobium, soil bacteria formation of root nodule occurs. Rhizobium bacteria are allowed to enter and colonize in the symbiotic organs and they produce nitrogen for the plant. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. Hydroponics is a technique of growing plants without soil in water containing dissolved nutrients. The two broad categories of element are macronutrient and micronutrient. The nutrients which are present in the tissues of the plant in high amount are called macronutrient. The elements needed in low amount are called micronutrient. Abnormal condition of green plants in which the stems and leaves turn pale, green or yellow is called chlorosis. The localized death of tissue of leaves is called necrosis. The retarded growth of the plant is termed as stunting. A fair increase or decrease in the amount of micronutrient required by the plant causes toxicity. Translocation is the movement of mineral salts from one region to another. Nitrogen cycle involves nitrogen fixation, ammonification, nitrification and denitrification. Biological nitrogen fixation is the process in which atmospheric nitrogen is reduced to ammonia by living organisms in the presence of nitrogenase.